Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel which is Best Notes Tutorials. In our class, we are going to discuss about William Wordsworth today. William Wordsworth does not require any introduction because right from the childhood we have been taught his poetries. If uh, I give you examples, then you will say that yes, you have read such poetries in your school days. Example is Daffodils, Lucy Gray, etc. So when we were taught in the school all these poetries, at that time, even the poet's details were also discussed. So still we remember. In my case, I remember William Wordsworth. I hope even you all do so. But in higher level, when you are sitting for the examination, it becomes very imperative to know much more details in a meticulous way. So, I am here to explain everything to you all from the examination point of view. So, let's begin with our class today and let us know how helpful this class is going to be. After the video, do let me know in the comment section. And uh, before I start with the class, let me tell you, that if you are interested in our courses, then do let us know. Friends, let's begin with the class now. Before starting my class, let me tell you all, if you require our courses, then here is the list and you can contact Kaushik sir for the courses. You can WhatsApp, you can make a call or you can drop, a, drop an email as well. In the number which is given here and uh, if you have any queries that will be answered in the message itself so feel free to contact us and uh, about any other details do message us okay so let's begin with our class so here I have already told you that it's William Wordsworth who is the topic today and specifically the prelude the work or you can say masterpiece magnum opus of William Wordsworth, we are going to discuss this particular poetry in depth. So let's start. William Wordsworth was born on 7th April 1770 and he died on 23rd April 1850. He was an English Romantic poet. Now this Romantic period uh, was between 1798 to 1837 please mark it from 1738 to 1837 and this particular period was started by the publication of lyrical ballads and uh, in order to publish the Wordsworth and S.T. Coleridge collaborated so if you ask me that why romantic period was extremely important then I'll tell you see because of industrialization maximum people and in that category there were everybody laborers a little bit uh, middle class people and then uh, the life had become so monotonous because maximum people started uh, engaging themselves in the factories industries work and then they could not get respite out of it. So, because of frustration, because of monotony, they started, you know, going towards depression. They started being engulfed in depression. So, it was romantic period who took them away and uh, gave them a new life. Because according to romantic period, it's nature which heals everybody's wound. And the same thing happened through the poetries of romantic poets as well. Now what is there further in this video? Let's see. Wordsworth's magnum opus is generally considered to be the prelude, the semi, sorry, a semi-autobiographical poem of his early years that he revised and expanded a number of times. Now, what is the meaning of magnum opus? Let me tell you, it's a great work which is 
created by any poet or artist and uh, it could be in the form of literature in the field of literature in the field of some art etc okay so it's masterpiece in one word it's masterpiece so william wordsworth's masterpiece is the prelude and in this particular poetry he tried to include all the sweet and bitter experiences of his childhood and he kept on revising it he kept on revising or updating that particular book so that he can make it a best version of his own book all right it a it was posthumously titled and published by his wife in the year of his death before it was generally known as the poem of coleridge see posthumously means after the death of the author before the prelude the name was the poem of coleridge later on it was changed wordsworth was poet laureate from 1843 until his death from pleurisy on 23rd april 1850 so here uh pleurisy means lung disease okay so because of lung disease he died so early and uh, in his short period of time he has given us so much so that we can never forget him ever in life you have to keep in mind uh, friends that that was the period when medical facilities were not up to the mark because of that our great poets our great leaders died at very early age and not only that uh, they were not uh, given medical proper medical treatment had there been proper medical treatment in the hospitals and uh, at uh, home also then they would not have died they would have given much more to us so because of lack of those things uh, we have lost our great leaders and uh, figures literary figures so here you need to understand that the date of his death is 23rd april 1850 the prelude or growth of a poet's mind you see the growth of a poet's mind is given this as a title because the poetry itself kept on growing and he is talking about a child in the poetry who is growing at the same time okay so whenever he remembered something special something worth mentioning to the readers he included and upgraded his poetry that is why it took lifetime to publish the book and that was also done by his wife okay this particular poetry was written in blank verse first of all it is autobiographical because poet is writing about his own life and it is written in blank verse it means that there is no rhyme scheme at all and uh, he writes as if he is talking to the readers he is communicating with the readers okay next point let's read out intended as the introduction to the more philosophical poem the recluse now see if uh, we talk about the meaning of the word recluse then we understand that it means separated or isolated so here we understand that he introduced his philosophical poem the recluse with wordsworth never finished the prelude is an extremely personal work and reveals many details of wordsworth's life so here in recluse we find recluse and the prelude we find minute details personal details of the poet so after reading this book we understand wordsworth much more precisely than ever wordsworth began the prelude in the year 1798 at the age of 28 and continued to work on it throughout his life so in this year he started writing poetry the prelude and this is started romantic period in english literature and it continued for many years he never gave it a 
title but call it the poem title not yet fixed upon to coleridge in his ref in his letters to his sister dorothy wordsworth so in the letter he mentioned that the title is not to be settled at that time the poem was unknown to the general public until the final version was published 3 months after william wordsworth's death in 1850 see the reason of delaying the publication of this particular book was that he wanted to make the refinement he wanted to add more details of his childhood and of his later life in his poetry but he did that as well but it was much delayed because of this delay his wife had to publish it on his behalf it present title was given to it by his widow mary now mary had given the title of this book as the prelude this might be asked in the question in your examination that who awarded the name to the poem the prelude you have to write mary the widower of william wordsworth there are three versions of the poem the 1799 prelude called the two part prelude composed 1798 composed between 1798 and 1799 containing the first two parts of the latter poem next in the year 1805 prelude which was found and printed by Ernst D selling court in 1926 in 13 books the 1850 prelude published shortly after wordsworth's death in 1940 let's move to the next point friends there are three versions of the poem the 1799 prelude called the two part prelude composed between 1798 to 1799 containing the first two parts of his later poem the 1805 prelude which was found and printed by ernest d selingcott in 1926 in 13 books the 1850 prelude is published shortly after william wordsworth's death in 14 books so this is how the book has been segregated and we need to learn all three because anything can be asked in mcqs from this particular poet the prelude was the product of a lifetime for the last part of his life wordsworth had been polishing the style and qualifying some of its radical statements about the divine sufficiency of human mind in its communion sorry communion with nature communion means connection okay attachment connection now see here we need to understand is that this will be done by everybody okay when we do something before showing it to our audience we refine it the same thing was done by william wordsworth as well but he had taken it to a very distant place okay it is because he has already written he should have published it at least part 1 part 2 part 3 but that did not happen he kept uh, it with himself so that he can do the refinement work and then he wanted to wanted his readers wanted his audience to go through it okay so lifetime he was polishing the style and the content of his poem the poem was intended as the prologue to a long three part epic and philosophical poem the recluse now see it was intended as the prologue prologue means the first part of uh, any work so it was a philosophical poem of course because it talks about life growth development etc 
Though Wordsworth planned his project when he was in his late twenties, he went to his grave at eighty years old, having written to some completion only the prelude and the second part, the excursion, and leaving no more fragments of the rest. So he was writing quite a lot of things, and at last these two were also there to publish by the William Wordsworth, which was done by his wife. According to Monique R. Morgan's narrative means to lyric ends in Wordsworth's prelude. Much of the poem consists of Wordsworth's interaction with nature that assured him of his poetic mission. Now, the only intention of romantic period was to connect with nature and in all his poetries he wants human being to do the same as he found respite and tranquility in the nature even our audience should be benefited by the poetry that is why william wordsworth wrote in that form The goal of the poem is to demonstrate his fitness to produce great poetry and the prelude itself become, becomes evidence of that fitness. Now see, in order to be able to connect with nature or anything, we need to be healthy from inside, outside as well. Because without having a healthy mind, without having a healthy heart, we will not be able to accomplish the things that we can see and that we can admire all right so this should be kept in mind while understanding the prelude by william wordsworth it traces the growth of the poet's mind by stressing the mutual consciousness and the spiritual communion between world nature and man according to the poet there should be connection between nature and man and finally it should have Spiritual communion. Communion means joined or together. Friends, in his book, we find different categories which are mentioned here. First of all, we find introduction where he mentions his childhood days and the time which he had in his school days. Next, particularly school time, more incidences continues in the next chapter. Okay, Then he talks about residence at Cambridge. After that, we find summer vacation incidences. And then we find books in the next chapter. Then we find Cambridge and the Alps. Next, we find residence in London. These are the incidences that happened in his life. Okay, from where he had to shift, from where we had to migrate, and what kind of experiences he had to. Uh, you know, beer in his mind, it is bitter, it is sweet. All those he mentions in different chapters in this poetry. Next, we have introspection of love of nature, which leads to love of man. So, finally, it means human beings should be connected with the nature because nature has cure to all the problems. Then, residence in France. Residence in France, here also he talks about some very important incident that happened which changed the course of his life. Next, again the story continues from the residence of France and then in the next to next chapter also the same thing we find. Same thing means the place is the same but the stories are different. Okay, But we find imagination and taste how impaired and restored. Now see, because of industrialization, the human taste has been impaired. They have lacked their taste because human being had become money-minded so far. Okay, Now they have to restore their taste. They have to go back to nature. They have to inculcate those behaviors because of which human being will be connected to nature solely. All right? So those things are mentioned and those continues finally he concludes the book and in the conclusion he talks about 
the role of nature in human beings life and why it is extremely crucial to prioritize the processes of nature and how classical system has ruined the peace of mind according to romantics okay it's not for all some like classical period some like new classical some likes romantic period so everybody sees different uh, identity different characteristics in different ages whichever they like they find it good they find it important they find it useful okay so in the same way william wordsworth finds very uh, essential criteria in romantic period from nature and that is what he concludes in this book next point we need to discuss is that the work is a poetic reflection on wordsworth's own sense of his poetic vocation as it developed over the course of his life so here william wordsworth shows his caliber vocation means his uh, skills okay so he shows his skills in this particular work that is the prelude here he shows his extreme connection with the nature through poetry and it kept on developing it kept on developing throughout his life that is why his work was delayed he thought that it's not perfect yet i have to make it perfect then he used to uh, make changes and at that time if we see it generally also it is a very huge task because everything has to be written again everything has to be edited again right now it's not like everything is typed in the computer and uh, whatever changes we have to make we will type it and we will just uh, do away with that particular work it's not so at that time practically when we analyze the thing we understand that they had to do it by hand it was a it was a manual work okay it was a manual work and it was massive as well because when they started writing okay they kept on adding incidences of life if we sit and write about ourselves we find what to write and what to exclude the same was the mindset of william wordsworth as well or any other poet okay when they started writing the caliber was already there in their mind that poetic flow was already there in their mind so they kept on adding their experiences in the poetry and it was a huge work okay so editing was also very difficult that is what i wanted to highlight here let's move to the next point now its focus and mood present a sharp and fundamental fall away from the new classical and into the romantic see new classicals were stick to the rules there was a particular system particular process which people had to follow all right but and uh, in uh, this particular era of literature everybody and everything was grand and it was it was not connectable common people could not relate the topic of classical classicals and neo classicals with them whereas the topics of romantics were close to common people also and they could relate okay the topics of classical poetry was grand like the rape of the lock the mere lock of hair was exaggerated cutting of that lock was exaggerated this was uh, written by alexander pope okay the rape of the lock so it was exaggerated and it was the you know the characters were very grand the entire scenario was so grand that common people will find it as if it is a fairy land it is imaginary world but whatever we choose from romantic period everything is relatable be it daffodils the flower which we see every day in the field right the bridge the wind which we experience then the things with uh, you know which is which is written on nature everything is close to our heart and the things are not lofty or grand everything is relatable to our lives that is why romantics believe that going close to nature is possible through our mind through our heart 
and that is more connectable than any other phase of literary era okay milton who is mentioned by name in line 181 of book 1 rewrote god's creation and the fall of man in paradise lost in order to justify the ways of god to men wordsworth chooses his own mind and imagination as a subject worthy of epic now see different poets chose their own topics whereas for william wordsworth something related to nature was enough to create his masterpiece that is why he took the power of mind and power of imagination and created this prelude let's read out the last point and then we will move towards summary the main idea of prelude is that as we grow older we grow more sophisticated in our views about the world that is very much true during our childhood we are so much connected with materialistic things that we don't emphasize what is the role of nature in our lives and why should be spiritual more than materialistic as we grow our materialistic views and materialistic attachment materialistic means the things that we can buy with with money okay like comforts of life happiness of life materialistic happiness when somebody buys phone clothes and eatables they become happy those are materialistic things but when somebody is grown up they want peace of mind they want tranquility they want no hustle and bustle in life so according to that they grow and peace and happiness is possible through nature and nothing else right let's start with the summary now it went unpublished until several months after his death in 1850 thereafter his wife mary wordsworth gave it its title the prelude okay so during his lifetime william wordsworth could not publish it because he kept on refining he kept on making it sophisticated book throughout his life but unfortunately he could not publish it and this work was taken up by his wife and fortunately we get we are blessed to have this book the poem is widely considered wordsworth's greatest and instrumental to early figurations and modernity in its focus on the epistemology of the self that is the question of what the self can know and do now see william wordsworth right from the childhood stage he wrote in his poetry and finally he was able to give a determinate form or figure to his experiences in the form of this book what kind of childhood he had what kind of people he met and how people changed his life especially teachers parents friends etc because whomever we meet they will have positive and negative effect upon us so what was it he figured it out in this section of the poetry the poem is widely considered wordsworth's greatest and instrumental to early figurations of modernity in its focus on the epistemology of the self that is the question of what the self can know and do now here we need to understand that figuration means concrete or definite form or figure and modernity means of modern time or present time then epistemology it means a branch of philosophy okay it's a branch of philosophy dealing with the study of knowledge and theory of knowledge all right so here what do we understand is that the poem is widely considered words greatest work because it gave a concrete idea about the knowledge about it's it's about the theory of knowledge without knowledge we know that the world is going to be zero through knowledge only we are surviving we are imparting knowledge we are receiving knowledge okay so based on that his work survived and 
we get to know more about it through his poetries and it makes us self realization it makes us self reliant as well we understand our worth we understand that how useful we are to nature and vice versa okay the poet initially sets out to explain how wordsworth's mind expanded over time until he identified as and claimed the title of poet so right from the beginning he was working on this project gradually he was upgrading himself upgrading upgrading himself and then finally he found that how much maturity he has gained till now and then he claimed for the title that is the prelude Wordsworth examines his childhood celebrating his many early opportunities to express himself he contrasts these experiences with his present frustration and strife see childhood is the best phase of life it is it is called the spring season in class 12th there is a lesson in cbse which means uh, which is uh, lost a spring okay so in that book lost a spring is compared with childhood is compared with spring season which is the best part of one's life where the child grows at uh, the full fledged form and it is the best phase because there is no responsibility there is no tension there is no hustle and bustle in life but the same situation becomes contrast when we grow and when we understand more during childhood we might not be knowing about so many things but it is carefree but as we grow we earn money we earn knowledge also but still we are not happy at the core of our heart right so this is what he wanted to say he explains that he has always inherently been a poet inherently means naturally or innately it is there in his heart it is not artificial okay it's there in his blood but might not have ever understood his vocation if he had not constantly reflected on past experiences see if he would not have written poetry he would not have come to know about his skills as well which was naturally there in his blood when he experienced when he wanted to write on his experience then he realized that how well he can write how well he can portray his words portray his emotions through poem he summarizes he summarizes his early memories of northern england's lake district as well as the emotional association he formed between it and the progression of the four seasons now see he summarizes very beautiful experience childhood experience of north england's district uh, lake district okay and the emotions associated with that particular place every place every person will have emotion to us and the same has been reflected in his poetry and through those experiences he, uh, he understood how much well he can write how proficient he was on writing poetry he likens himself to the flora of his childhood home since he also originated as a figurative seed constrained and enriched by his developmental environment now see he compares likens means compares he compares himself with flora or plant okay you must have read in science flora and the fauna animal life and plant life on the earth okay so here plant life he is comparing to himself just like a seed needs nut uh, water food in the same way he required some qualities to enrich his poetic skills and that happened through environment and that environment developed him to what he is right now okay the caliber which he had it was nurtured by the experience if a person does not have anything to write on then he is useless if a person is there who writes well but nothing is there in his mind his content is zero then what will happen there won't be any interesting fact interesting content in his writing so nobody will value that 
so that is what he mentions out here that through his experience he developed his skills in the second section of the poetry wordsworth recalls his mother's death and his process of grieving he was very sad grief the word grieving has come from grief okay sadness so mother's death made him very much disappointed and that is mentioned in the poet by the poet in his poetry the names sorry he names death as partially responsible for his deep fear of being alienated from society now see he has experienced death separates people from their beloved ones and that particular reason that is death is responsible for his deep fear he is fearful of losing loved and dear people in his life okay so he became very fearful of getting isolated in his society as well because he thought that after death nobody comes back and the person has to lead his life all alone so let's move to another point once he died once she died he found solace in nature which became his maternal substitute greatly deepening and enriching his inner life as he explored and bonded to its many mysteries obviously nature is compared with mother and vice versa so when he lost his mother he found recluse he found recluse from the maddening society and he came to nature and that healed his wound he considered nature to be his mother and that is why he got his wound all cured he did so until he came to age and enrolled to enrolled at the university of cambridge so as he grew he understood that he has to move on so he wrote quite a longer period of time and in the university it became a very devoted work his isolation from his home and from a natural environment in general was like the death of his second mother now what happened his uh, mother his biological mother was already dead and then second mother was his nature but when he came to city where he could not find any any sort of nature or any entity of nature then he considered that even his second mother died second mother is nature please remember okay it might be asked in the question so second mother is nature it's not any step mother of william wordsworth okay the next part of the poem focuses on wordsworth's experience of experience at cambridge so in this college in this university he received so many friends some had good memories some gave bad memories and all those he portrayed in his poetry at first he was lost in the noises and pitfalls of his early self sufficient life see when he was in cambridge he was happy to some extent because he was lost in the modern things that he saw in city but after some time it became a sort of bore activity for him over time however the academic exposure broadened william words with imagination and sharpened his intellectual side now see when he was away from nature at that time also he was sharpening or honing his skills he gave importance to academics and through this he became intelligent person as well because he now have a lot of knowledge about so many things so he can put in he can give to his content a better shape and better presentation so that is what we see that throughout the year he worked on his this work he came to love urban life in its own right yet used its summer vacations to return to the place of his youth now see he had to be there in the urban life urban life means city life modern life where people are busy in his studies in earning money and leading their life and bettering their life okay so here even what's worth was engaged there but whenever he had time like summer vacation he was with his nature and he wrote something 
on that particular time. After a trip during which Wordsworth hiked through the French Alps, he concluded that the imagination exists and can be nourished independently of the natural world. Now see, he says that every individual had some liking towards nature, be it uh, from city or village. Okay, now that imagination can be nurtured or developed through importance. If we don't want to imagine, we will not imagine. But when we are dedicated to imagine something, write on it and uh, ease our life, then obviously everybody can do that. For that, we need to make our imagination very strong and that is possible when we give time to this. Okay, He saw the natural world as one of the many, one of many great beautiful places of creative world. Obviously, God has created this beautiful world which will never be destroyed. The buildings, the huge constructions might get destroyed, but the nature will never be. In some form, it will remain on this earth. So that is what he talks about out here. After graduating from Cambridge, Wordsworth moved briefly to London, then to France. So in his life, in his youth rather, he kept on migrating from one place to another. He met and was influenced by the French patriot Michael Beaupoy, who taught him to care about political revolution. Now see, he was a patriot, French patriot, who influenced his life a lot. See, whenever a poet or a writer writes, they are influenced by political situation. They will write in their work something which has connection with the present scenario. The same thing has happened out there as well. Because of French Revolution and other minor revolutions, there were lots of chaos created by the common people and in that he had to survive. Yet Wordsworth faced the imminent threat that would become that would become known as the French Revolutionary Wars and took refuge in London. He had to leave France and then he had to reside in London in order to save himself in this crisis period of French Revolution. Thereafter, he worried greatly about France's future and experienced a crisis of faith about the stability of nation and the possibility of non-violent revolution. Now see, French Revolution... We know about the monarchical system that they had and the problem which they had faced. Common people were asked to pay taxes even if they were not uh, economically sound. So all those tortures were done to the people. That is why there was revolution which took place. And, and because of these revolutions, obviously the country will not grow. The country will have problem which will hinder their future. The same thing was established by the leaders of that period. And in this chaotic situation, he could not write much. Towards the end of the poem, Wordsworth returns to where he began. See, he started with the nature, then lots of... He started with the nature, then he had lots of problems in life, and then again he was back to nature. So this is everything's life. This is everything's life which we had to accept. He finds his way to the Lake District where he was first enamored of the complexity and beauty of nature, suspecting that he could feed his imagination by covering specific moments from childhood. So, being there in nature, Wordsworth understood that without nature, nothing can be possible. Without nature, we will have complex we will have self-doubting. We will have no relationship, a proper healthy relationship with anyone because everybody is selfish. They have something or the other things to ask from relatives. So, we need to understand here that the poet wants us to 
understand that nature is the prime solution to all the problems of human being. His search triggered a series of powerful flashbacks to his early childhood. In his poetry, we find now and then he is connected with his childhood and he narrates the childhood experiences. The trip home restored his belief in the intrinsic value of life, something that he understood to be accessible only through the imagination, yet impossible to destroy. Now see, something which is not real, something which is created in mind, to some people it will remain for a fragment of minutes, but for some it is undestroyable from their mind. Through imagination, through passionate imagination, whatever we create, that passion is not going to get destroyed. Say for example, if you have seen some uh, dream wholeheartedly, then throughout your life, it will remain with you. Right? So you will think about it, you will get motivated, you will get inspired and then you will move on. So that motivation is positive one which is received from nature itself. He terms these physical sites of memory spots of time and suggests that they are key to restoring the imagination. So at that moment, what is there in front of him, in front of them, what they are touching, what kind of experiences they are bearing in their heart and mind that remains forever in their life. And when it is connected with nature, it is permanent. He celebrates the infinite value of nature and the calmness and freedom of childhood, a feeling that one can obtain even in old age. As I told you that this remains throughout our life. So whatever you know experiences we create with our nature, it is never ending. It's eternal. And every time when we remember about its uh, nature, about its essence we find fresh and we find revitalized and active in our life again as it is said in a thing of beauty by john keats so here also we find the same essence he celebrates the infinite value of nature and the calmness and freedom of childhood a feeling that one can obtain even in old age the experience that human being had during their childhood, it remains throughout their life and it can come into our mind during our old age and refresh and re-energize ourselves. Finally, Wordsworth hoons in on several of his own spots of time. See, he takes us to different time period of his life one by one. Whatever he remembers, he takes us to that particular incident. One of these is his accent of the highest mountain in Wales, Mount Snowdon. So he had gone for trekking out here and then he talks about that incident. Upon reaching the summit, Wordsworth gazed at the fog encroaching on all sides of the lower mountain and developed an analogy between light and the imagination. So after reaching Mount Snowdon, he was able to experience nature. Encroaching means capturing or crossing the boundary of some something somebody else, okay, which is not in your control. It is the owner is somebody else. So here he could imagine light and imagination it is developed through analogy both are penetrative forces that eliminate confusion and allow one to comprehend the interesting objects of the world both light and imagination makes our life easier light clears all the doubts that we have all the ignominious things that we have, it becomes enlightened. Through imagination, we reach to unexplored worlds. Through imagination, where there is no limit of anyone, our imagination can be controlled by ourselves. There is no owner in our imagination.
or of our imagination to be very precise. Therefore, through imagination, we can achieve everything and any time. Okay. He ends his work giving thanks to his sister Dorothy and to his friendship with Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the esteemed poet who reportedly convinced him to write his autobiographical poem. Dorothy is Dorothy Wordsworth's sister, who is uh, also a poet, and uh, S.T. Coleridge. He is also one of the members of Romantic Poets, early Romantic Poets. Okay, So he inspired William Wordsworth to write, and that is why we can see Prelude, we can read Prelude in present time as well. He holds that these two individuals made the poem possible by pushing him to believe in himself. So here, this is inspirational thing which we find in this point because when we are not inspired by ourselves, when we are not able to generate motivation, when we are not able to generate inspiration within ourselves, then we should take help from somebody or others should uh, encourage us to make something worthy changes in our society. And that was done by Dorothy and S.T. Coleridge, to whom he was indebted lifetime. It's a highly reflective poem. The prelude continually returns to the same sides of William Wordsworth's memory, showing how they are essential to the construction of selfhood. Now, in this poetry, when he talks about part by part experience of his life, it shapes any person, any person to become developed, sophisticated human being. And uh, for this, any individual requires help from their beloved ones. That is what he received and that is why this prelude could be completed. So friends, by this we have completed our uh, story which was related to the childhood experiences of William Wordsworth. So we will meet in our next video. Till then, take care, bye-bye and thank you everyone. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And at last I'd like to say thank you to all of you for making us a family of 10,000 100 members. Thank you.